it's impressive that the police have been able to keep up with him throughout these maneuvers and throughout these dangerous speeds. You can see, once again, 80 miles per hour on Garfield Avenue, a ridiculous speed on a road like this. Fortunately, uh, Garfield, uh, this part of Garfield appears to have pretty light traffic. But again, once he encounters traffic, police are really limited. As you mentioned, I really don't know how much of an option a pit maneuver is in this situation. If he establishes a pattern, obviously they're all going to be ready with a spike strip. But that's going to require a lot more coordination. And with these erratic turns and random moves that he's making, it's really almost impossible to set up for a spike strip. So they're going to follow this as long as they can safely. But they, you're right, they've got, to, they've got to figure out a way to get him off the road. Yeah, really dangerous driving, and I, I'm again, I can't, I, I can't say it enough. I'm really impressed with these black and whites that have been able to keep up with him despite all of this. As we start to get closer to the 10 freeway, I can tell you traffic on the 10 is much lighter than the 60, which we saw a few, uh, a few seconds ago. Uh, continuing northbound on Garfield, swerving around traffic here, heading directly for the 10 freeway. We'll see if he goes under the 10. Yep, looks like he's bypassing the entrance ramp and wants to go under the 10 freeway. So that's the 10 right there. Coming out the other end here, and his next major cross street is going to be Valley Boulevard, which is going to have a little more traffic. No, not really. In fact, he kind of speeds, he basically speeds up and then will look for his next turn, thinking he could lose them. He keeps trying to lose them. He hasn't really been successful at all, although you saw when we first joined you live, he almost uh, caused a crash there that one of the unmarked units almost crashed into a parked car. So you see the way he's making these wide turns, really losing control there, fishtailing through the intersection, coming really close to a parked car there. I got to tell you, one of the things we saw right before we came live, he did that same move with a... Uh, uh, a child on a bicycle came really close to pedestrians in the earlier parts of this chase. But the chase continues now, going on the better part of 30 minutes as we continue through East L.A. here. Dangerous driving, high speeds, all over the road, desperate to lose police, and police doing their best to keep up with him. This is the first time he's actually slowed down a little bit. But, man, the driving that we're seeing here with that type of a vehicle, it doesn't take much to lose control. He spent quite a time, quite a bit of time on Garfield. Now we're just a block away from San Gabriel High School. Gonna, yep, yep, cross traffic, hit that car, took off a tail light, and keeps on going. There is no rationale behind this wheel. The driving we're seeing is going to get somebody hurt. We've already seen a couple of close calls here, a couple of light collisions. But the potential for a major cross-traffic T-bone disaster is very, very high. He comes through these intersections at really high speeds. Just a second ago, you saw doing 65, 70, 80 miles an hour on Garfield Avenue and going through all of the stop signs, not even slowing down. You could tell if there's brake lights, maybe he would be slowing down, but there's no brake lights to speak of. He's just speeding right through a lot of these intersections, has the green light here now making his way westbound on Main Street here in Alhambra, downtown Alhambra. Another Y turn. Yeah, something tells me that's how this pursuit's going to end up 
winding up. I think he's just going to lose control. There is not a whole lot of confidence behind the wheel here. And the way he's taking these turns, eventually he's going to lose control. Fishtail out. And look at that. Look at that. Uh, another wide turn into oncoming lanes of traffic. Didn't even have the right of way there. And almost uh, encountered another vehicle there. So now we're going northbound on Atlantic Boulevard just north of Grand Avenue and continuing north through Alhambra at very dangerous speeds, once again pushing 70 miles per hour on Atlantic Boulevard. Trying to make a left turn here. Okay, making a left turn back onto Garfield. Back onto Garfield Avenue, and uh, you're so right. Slowing down a little bit, so you do have to wonder what the gas situation is. Uh, Bell Gardens Police still behind him, and L.A. County Sheriff still overhead here. Uh, slowing down a little bit in a more residential neighborhood, that's good news, but we are making our way up towards Pasadena. We're in San Marino now as we continue north on Garfield. Traffic is, uh, you know, it's what you would expect to see at this time of the day, and that is really posing so much risk. We're squeezing right past that city bus there. You know, it's just so hard stopping when he comes up on some of these intersections. So close, but so lucky so far. No, they've actually, they, they, they've fallen back, not intentionally, but they have actually fallen back, having a hard time keeping up. You know, you, 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 had, to, you had to wonder if that was going to happen, the way he was making some of these turns. You know, there is a way to lose somebody if you're driving crazy enough, and certainly the individual behind this wheel is crazy enough to do whatever it takes. But that unmarked vehicle is still in pursuit, just a little bit of a ways back. Now the marked units are even further back. Again... That may be intentional to a certain degree, but this is, now look at that, somebody crossing the street there, making another right turn onto Fair Oaks Avenue and maybe getting onto the 110 freeway. It looks like he's going to go south on the 110 freeway, and this is now going to become a freeway pursuit, and I can only, I can only say that that is good news under the circumstances because once he gets on the freeway, First of all, we'll see if CHP gets uh, involved here. But on the freeway, uh, he's going to have a lot more room. To, if he wants to you know, drive crazy, it's much safer for everybody involved, including law enforcement, to have this on the freeway. Let him use up as much gas as possible. You can see he's still doing extreme speeds, 90, mi 90 miles an hour southbound on the 110 freeway. But uh, CHP, I would imagine, is already monitoring the pursuit, ready to get involved if they have units in position. Still, though, Bell Gardens is the lead agency with L.A. County's Sheriff Helicopter in pursuit. 95 miles per hour now. Yeah. Yeah, kind of zigzagging his way through Highland Park.
and I actually do think he's actually lost uh, the units behind him. It was just getting too dangerous. They pulled back a little bit, relying predominantly now on LA County Sheriff's helicopter to uh, to call call out the positions here. Now we're on Piedmont Avenue here in the heart of Highland Park coming up on Avenue 61. You can see continuing uh, westbound now through Highland Park and uh, eventually uh, we'll have the opportunity to, uh, well basically the next freeway will be the two freeway if he continues in this direction. Looks like he just made a southbound turn onto Avenue 59, and it looks like LAPD has now expressed interest in engaging this pursuit, so they may very well go ahead and take it over from here. Uh, I think he was able to lose those Bell Gardens units, but now LAPD in the process of triangulating this position and getting units into the area. You can see that's going to be an LAPD unit right behind him here going the wrong way on, Fig on Figueroa. Look at that. Crazy speeds here. LAPD joining him on in oncoming lanes of traffic, now on the correct lanes, on the correct side of the road, I should say, doing about 65, 65 miles per hour on Figueroa. Yeah, it's one thing if he was driving a sedan, but with this type of a, a, a truck with uh, who knows what's in the back there, apparently the original want was reckless driving, uh, but uh, with all of the uh, equipment in that back there and the, uh, the weight of this pickup truck, he has not done a great job of managing these turns. And so, again, we've seen a lot of close calls having a hard time maneuvering through some of these turns. But uh, so far, again, he's been very lucky, to say the least. He has suffered a little bit of front-end damage there. We saw him took off somebody's taillight a little bit earlier. But now, as we come up on Pasadena Avenue at Arroyo Drive, continuing over the tracks here, LAPD's, uh, okay, sounds like LAPD is now canceling the pursuit. LAPD now canceling the pursuit, and we'll see if they continue to track him. For now, though, those units on the ground have decided to pull back. It just got too dangerous. You can kind of tell just from the driving that we've been seeing up here in Air 7 HD, uh, it's just it's just too much. The public safety is at risk at this time of the day with this much volume and the, the amount of close calls that we've seen. Uh, they're, they, it's just, just not worth it. Oh, a train coming right through, right through the railroad. There's a train actually coming, and there's the train on the right side of your screen. He was racing. Racing that train, I think he saw that train, he went right through the guardrails, and uh, man, oh man, this is dangerous. You know, they can only track it so long before they have to get him off the road. Somebody is going to get hurt. Looks like he hit another car there. What they don't want is they don't want their own units to put, it's bad enough that this guy is driving so erratically through city streets at this time of the day and the amount of traffic out there. The last thing they need are two or three more patrol cars following him and doing the same maneuvers. It kind of escalates the amount of danger and the amount of risk involved with a pursuit like this. But the, the thing is, tracking mode only works if the suspect slows down and his behavior changes and they can catch him later on. If the crazy driving continues, they don't have a choice but to 
use extreme measures in, in some cases to bring the pursuit to an end. Now they have the luxury of the helicopter overhead here, but the helicopter really can't do much to get him off the road. The helicopter can only call out the positions and help capture him once he finally bails. And I, did, I for some reason, I just have the feeling the way he's driving so aimlessly, I think when he gets comfortable enough, he probably will dump this vehicle and take a run for it, just foot bail, unless he gives himself up. But uh, he's now done a number of circles through so many different neighborhoods. There's no way he's got any real clear destination in mind. He's basically taking this as long as he can. Somewhat of a joyride. You can see LAPD going the opposite way. So they have units in the area. They have their chopper tracking as well. The pursuit right now is still canceled. But there are units in the area ready to take him down when he does come to a stop. We have another unit engaging. Yep, yep, they're back on them. They, it looks like they want to continue the pursuit. I want to see, let's see if we can get the agency. That might be, what agency is that, Rob? Can we push in there right behind them? Looks like that's going to be, that's going to be South Pass. South Pass is in pursuit now. South Pasadena in pursuit now making a left turn onto Avenue 57. So I have a feeling that that South Pass unit saw him speed through that intersection, went right through the red light, and is just taking it upon himself to stop this vehicle, may or may not be aware of the pursuit that was just going on. That's very possible in the situation like this. A lot of times these mutual agencies are, are monitoring, but in this case, I don't know if that unit was aware or not. But you can see the helicopter still overhead here. Can we just make sure that is that South Pass unit still behind him? Looks like the unmarked unit from Bell Gardens is back at, in the pursuit. So that unmarked unit now as he uh, threads the needle through this intersection here, trying to get around, and now looks like he wants to get on to the 110. He wants to get onto the 110 freeway coming towards us here. And it's going to be westbound on the 110 freeway. Now, or, I'm sorry, eastbound. Eastbound on the 110. Northbound, I should say. There are some canisters. I can't tell what kind of tanks they are. Uh, they could be propane. They very well could be propane tanks. Looks like maybe an oxygen, ta oxygen tank there as well. Another blue canister. So a number of chemicals that may be in the back there have no idea, but obviously that's going to, uh, you know, obviously be a concern for law enforcement when this comes to an end as well, or at least raise the stakes. God forbid he gets into a major crash.
I, I think they were involved in something entirely different. I have, I, they probably have no idea uh, that that suspect just passed them. Uh, we're still not far from the 110 freeway. It, uh, it raises a flag for me, the fact that he had plenty of room to work with. I mean, traffic in the direction he was going on the 110 was fairly light, and he jumped off the freeway for no apparent reason. It's very difficult sometimes to get into the head of somebody who's uh, driving like this or running from police, and in this case, uh, I don't even, does he still have that unit behind him? In this case, he doesn't even have a unit behind him. He's still driving extremely recklessly, which, by the way, is apparently how this all began. He was driving very erratically, very recklessly. Bell Gardens police tried to pull him over, and the pursuit began, now going on about 45 minutes at least as we make our way again through Highland Park. We haven't really left Highland Park. We uh, kind of ventured into South Pasadena a little bit. Uh, we made our way through San Marino. Um, but continuing north now on Avenue 65. So we'll see what he decides to do here. I just have a feeling that all of these turns that he keeps making are pretty aimless, pretty random. I don't think he has uh, a neighborhood or a destination in mind just based on the driving that I've observed up here. Made some erratic, yep, made some erratic turns to get to this point, but this is the first time he's actually taken a deep breath, seems to be slowing down here, doing about the speed limit, and there's nobody behind him. So I think he's, uh, his endurance level may be starting to wear down a little bit as he makes his way north, he or she, don't know for sure, north on Avenue 64. We are getting closer to the 134. And uh, if he continues at this pace, maybe he'll just stay on, 160, on Avenue 64, uh, now entering Pasadena's jurisdiction here. Surely Pasadena is monitoring the frequency. Again, you still have that L.A. County Sheriff's helicopter overhead calling out the positions, and they probably are monitoring. Whether they decide to get engaged here and pick up the pursuit, that's another story. Pasadena, a little more conservative, uh, but, uh, and, and by the way, the driving has also de-escalated a little bit, ever so slightly. I mean, he's still skirting those center lines there, so still trying to uh, get to wherever he's going, or at least to the end of the gas tank, but the speeds at least have slowed down quite a bit here in the last four minutes. So we're getting word from our assignment desk now. This is a heating and air conditioning work truck. So as we make our, as we uh, continue through here, you see that blue canister rocking and rolling around. Uh, concerns me that uh, looks like he had the driver's side window open for a second. Now getting onto the 134. 
Getting onto the 134, back on the freeway here. LA County still following overhead, going around this traffic at this on-ramp here. So we're now on the 134 between Glendale and Pasadena, technically the Barack Obama Highway here, as we make our way in towards downtown Pasadena on the 134. He's now going eastbound on the 134, and nobody behind him. But you saw right before he got onto the freeway, he was still going the wrong way. He was still going the wrong way, and the county sheriff has now asked CHP to get involved. It sounds like CHP is on the way over to this area to get involved. If he stays on the freeway, it'll remain their jurisdiction, but no, it looks like he's going to get off here, and maybe, uh, well, no, he could get on the 210 freeway. That might have been a 210 transition. No, that's San Fernando. The San Yeah, it's the transition to the 210 North. He might have seen some of that traffic up ahead as uh, as he was approaching Pasadena. Volume on the freeway was picking up a little bit. Looks like a male driver, elderly male driver behind the wheel here. And that's not exactly surprising either, just based on the confidence behind the wheel in terms of the way he's been controlling the vehicle. Even at slow speeds, he's having a hard time making turns and also coming very close to other vehicles. And again, desperate enough to get into oncoming lanes of traffic for no apparent reason, even with nobody behind him, as we now end up on the 210 freeway here. Northbound 210 is pretty light, a little bit heavier on the southbound side. But if he continues on the northbound side, it looks like it's pretty wide open as we head up towards Latuna Canyon. Um, uh, traffic is pretty light all the way through here. Still in the number two lane, still doing about 90 miles per hour, up to about 80 to 90, and uh, slowing down a little bit now, but uh, definitely uh, a much preferable situation if CHP can uh, catch up with them here. This will be a very manageable situation for them. They can create a traffic break and then kind of ride this pursuit out up the 210 freeway.
it raises so many questions. Uh, it's, it's, it, you know, th there's so many different reasons why people run from the police. We don't have to go through them, but what the situation is here, really peculiar, just based on the erratic turns. And uh, by the way, CHP has now re-engaged the suspect, but for no reason at all, making turns off of major roads, off of the freeway for no reason. This time he was on the 210 freeway, went off the 210, got on the southbound side, and now off the 210 here at Lincoln. Again, there's no way he has business in any of these neighborhoods, considering that we started in Bell Gardens, and he's done the same joyride through a several different cities, several different neighborhoods, some residential neighborhoods, some major thoroughfares, but the driving just seems so random and so aimless. You've got to wonder what the mental capacity is behind the wheel. Probably not a gang member going on a joyride, but you never know. It just seems like some, somebody who's obviously has no intention of stopping for, for police and somebody who's having a hard time calculating the, the, the maneuvering of this vehicle. He's having a hard time calculating the turns, the speeds, the braking. The handling of the vehicle is, uh, is is really causing him some trouble. The faster he goes, another cross track. Oh, no! Oh, no! We're right into a driver's side of that truck. Oh, that was so fast. That was so fast. Oh, no. Oh, no. CHP's right there. CHP is right there. They're going to take... They're going to get him out. They've got to get an ambulance out here right away. L.A. County overhead. We've got only the one CHP unit behind him there. They only had the one that was able to keep up with him. That unit did such a great job getting off at the freeway. But that was a violent, violent crash. That was terrible. Again, we're at North Orange Boulevard at Holly Street, uh, right along the 210 freeway. That's the 210 overpass uh, that you're looking at on the top left-hand corner of your screen. I cannot stress how violent and how fast that happened. That was the worst case scenario. That's the nightmare situation for law enforcement. And this guy has just got somebody really, really hurt. Push it on the driver. On the on the driver. The driver. The, the pursuit driver. It looks like he's complying. He's got his hands behind his hands on his head. He's got his hands on his head, but they can't do anything until they get him into custody. Ambulance is obviously on the way out here, but they're not even going to be able to approach him until backup approaches. He's not going to be able to take this guy into custody until backup arrives, and then they'll be able to let the ambulance in to to, to check out the, the, uh, the victims inside that other vehicle. But it's going to take a little bit of time, time so precious in a situation like this, but uh, the closest units, still a little bit of a ways away. We were just talking about rush hour traffic. Here comes another unit to help him take this guy into custody. Hopefully they can all approach him here in a second. Take him in. That's going to be Pasadena Police and California Highway Patrol on top. So the SUV is CHP. That car that just pulled up is Pasadena Police. The suspect now proned out at gunpoint. They're going to approach him, I would imagine, pretty quickly here because they want to get to the driver and passengers in the other car as soon as possible. Go over. Let's go to the car. Somebody's approaching the car, so we've got a civilian now approaching the car to check on the driver of that, that looks like maybe a Toyota. I can't tell for sure, but uh, now uh, CHP coming up on the vehicle, and they'll be able to attend to whoever was in this car. What a tough hit that was directly into the driver's side door.
want to be real careful here. That's going to be the airbag that's blocking our view. So we'll see if we see some movement coming from the uh, the passenger side here. If they try, you know, sometimes in situations like this, the driver's actually knocked out, put to sleep by the by the airbag, and then will wake up kind of stunned and shocked about what happened. Uh, but we'll see. It looks like the CHP. The CHP officer looks like he may have been communicating with the driver, uh, but we'll see here. We'll see. Pasadena firefighters now checking out the driver. They're going to try and extricate the driver. It might be tough to open that driver's side door, so they're going to go through the, the passenger side here and start working on that driver. So we'll stay with this and watch to see uh, how they do here. But uh, that, that, that driver's side door, obviously, so heavily damaged uh, that they've got to use the passenger side. Looks like they're opening the back door as well, maybe to get some more firefighters in there. Not sure if there's anybody in the back seat, but it doesn't look like it. Uh, here come the jaws of life. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and re take another look at that crash. Go for it. You're right. It's it's true. It's true. It's so rare. You know, we just had the one yesterday in Van Nuys. I mean, I can remember one a few, a couple of months ago over on the west side where that person on a scooter was struck. But, you know, these for some reason, they tend to get lucky enough and have enough sense to stop at times. Sometimes they're just, it's a matter of luck. In this case, though, he wasn't braking. He wasn't slowing down for any of these lights, any of the stop signs. There were so many close calls, and it was really just a matter of time and unfortunately uh, you know it just happened to be that split second as he came up on this intersection approaching the overpass at the 210 freeway just slammed right into the driver's side of that car
I mean, usually it's just out of self-preservation they would slow down or, 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 or hit the brake or swerve or try and, uh, you know, avoid a potential collision. Uh, but he just was speeding like a bullet right through this intersection. I could tell you that the uh, the driver is alone in the vehicle. He is conscious and breathing. Uh, Pasadena Fire now attending to him, uh, and that's a good sign. So we'll see we'll see the ambulance pull up here in a second, and they hopefully will be able to get him out. Right now, one of the challenges is going to be getting him out of the car. I think both the driver's side, passenger, and front doors were so heavily damaged. That may be why they have the jaws of life ready to start, maybe tearing the roof off of the car or tearing the doors off. But accessing him right now is one of the bigger problems. That's why they're going through the passenger side on the right side of the car. Um, but uh, it does look like the driver is uh, conscious and breathing. The extent of the injuries, obviously unknown. Fortunately, as you mentioned, Mark, a newer vehicle with lots of airbags in there, and they all went off, and that may, in this case, have very well saved a life. While we go ahead and do that, let's go ahead and take a look at the crash as he came through the intersection. We'll go ahead and rack that up, and you can see as he approached the intersection, there was traffic on the right there. He had this intersection that was a red light, and that driver just was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, and that's exactly, you can see it right there, right at about 53 miles per hour is where that uh, collision, how that collision took place. Wow. Yeah, they were all pretty light, obviously. Um, there were so many more close calls, including several pedestrians early on in the pursuit. Um, and in all of those instances, he just didn't slow down. There was no hesitation, no self-preservation. It was just a frantic uh, run for his life, trying to outrun the police. Obviously, during most of this pursuit, with the exception of with the exception of a few minutes where they put it into tracking mode, and even then, even when there was nobody behind him, there was no threat on the ground at least. The helicopter was overhead the whole time. But even when he wasn't being pursued actively, he was still driving like a maniac through city streets, through residential neighborhoods, up and down the freeway at various points, randomly getting on and off exit ramps, and it was just a, 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 another wild one. You just can't say it enough.
looks like they've got, well, the, the, the good news is they've been able to open that door. So now it's just a matter of very gingerly uh, transferring him onto that backboard and then onto the stretcher. The good news is that they don't have to waste time tearing the roof off. They've been able to get that door open, fortunately, and now they will very, very carefully. The number one concern, obviously, is his back and then, obviously, the rest of his limbs. But they want to make sure that spinal cord is as straight and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, 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 intact, as stable as possible. Thank you. And there he is on the stretcher. So we'll see him transferred into the ambulance here momentarily. That should happen a little bit quicker, and they'll be able to start working on him and get him to the hospital, obviously, as soon as, as, soon as possible. It is female. What was that? Oh. Over here, over here. Let's see the car seat. The car seat back rear, right, right rear. I want to get a good look at it. Definitely a car seat, right? Is it a car seat? Yes, 10-4. Forty minutes, forty minutes. Oh, we got three. either high, I think he was high. Copy that. You. Thank you. <laughs> 